Hey guys, welcome back to Rapture Alerts. My name is Sean. If you're just tuning in, this is just a guy talking about Jesus. That's all I do over here. And I'm watching and waiting for my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to take us home in a pre-tribulation rapture. I hope you're happy, healthy, and well, and that you have what you need. Guys, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you were in your Bible. I hope you did some studying and that you were walking with the Lord and praying. I have got Revelation chapter 12 here. I've got some commentary on it. We're going to have a great study and we're going to start our week off right. Come over here and hang out with me and break your coffee out if you have it. I hope you are looking up because your redemption draws nigh. I'm not going to dive into a lot of articles today because you guys know what's going on. If something significant happens, we'll bring it out here. We're going to stick to the meat and potatoes and we're going to eat on rapture alerts. Thank you so much for supporting me, guys. I appreciate you so much. I got a smile on my face today. And I really do appreciate you, and I really do pray for you. So if you have those prayer requests, make sure to email me and reach out and let me know what you need. Let's open up a prayer and let's get started, guys. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask you to please bless this message. Please give each subscriber and viewer the desires of their heart in accordance with your will in these last moments that we have here, Lord. I know that you won't fail or forsake us. I ask that you please lift every single one of us up right now to where we can stand against the enemy because I know you're about to take us home. You're about to crush the enemy once and for all, Lord. I cannot wait to be changed in the twinkling of an eye and be caught up in the clouds with you, Father. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for giving me another opportunity to come out here and talk about you and be your messenger. Amen. Man, Jesus is awesome. Let's get it going. We're going to do something different today. I want to read the commentary first, a little bit of an explanation, and then we're going to read Revelation 12, okay? What does Revelation chapter 12 mean? Starting in chapter 12, Revelation takes a detour from the step-by-step -step narrative of the end times. The events described occur over a wide variety of errors, including past, present, and future. In the course of these visions, seven main figures are described. Five of those appear in this chapter. The next two chapters will continue to fill in the details. Chapter 15 adds another vision of heaven, and chapter 16 will return to a more chronological depiction of the last days. This passage typifies the grand symbolism found in much of the book of Revelation. John sees a woman clothed with the sun, crying out in pain as she gives birth. Waiting to kill her child is a red dragon. The woman symbolizes Israel, the dragon is Satan, and the male child is Jesus. The male child is caught up to God, a reference to Jesus' ascension after his resurrection, and the woman is able to flee into the wilderness. Next, John observes a war in heaven, where Michael, the archangel, fully casts Satan out of heaven. This is not a depiction of the initial fall of Satan, according to Old Testament books such as Job. The devil was still able to access heaven and accuse hum humanity before God. At this point, however, he will be entirely evicted and thrown down to earth. This results in rejoicing in heaven, but also a dire warning. Now that Satan is running out of time and confined to the earth, his rage will be taken out on mankind, especially Israel. Jesus predicted an abomination of desolation in Matthew 24, 15 through 16. There, he most likely referred to a defilement of the temple by the Antichrist. Jesus warned that people ought to respond to this act by fleeing to the mountains. Here in Revelation, the people of Israel are given supernatural protection by God, symbolized by the reference to wings and able to survive for a period of three and a half years. Echoing other prophetic messages about an invasion by a northern army, that's Ezekiel 38, John also sees the serpent, attempt to wash the woman away with a flood of water from his mouth. This would symbolize an armed invasion. God again protects the woman with what Ezekiel says is a tremendous earthquake. That's Ezekiel 38, 19 through 22. This enrages Satan who commits to attacking the offspring of the woman, of the woman, excuse me. The five figures mentioned in this chapter are the woman who symbolizes Israel, the seven-headed dragon who represents Satan, the male child who is Jesus, Satan himself as the fourth figure, and the offspring of the woman, referring to the people of Israel. The following chapter will introduce the last two major characters who are among the most infamous in all of Scripture, the Antichrist and the false prophet. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 12 now in Scripture that we've looked at a brief explanation of it in the commentary. 
Let's see what the Bible says. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. And she was pregnant, and she cried out, being in labor and in pain, to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads were seven crowns. And his tail swept away a third of the stars of heaven and hurled them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she gave birth he might devour her child. And she gave birth to a son, a male, who is going to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, so that there she would be nourished for 1,260 days. And there was a war in heaven, Michael and his angels waging war with the dragon. The dragon and his angels waged war, and they did not prevail. Amen. And then, excuse me, and there was no longer a place found for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, the serpent of old, who was called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life, even when faced with death. For this reason rejoice. You heavens and you who dwell in them, woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has come down to you with great wrath, knowing that he only has a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was thrown down to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. But the two wings of the great eagle were given to the woman so that she could fly into the wilderness to her place, where she was nourished for a time, times, in half a time, that means three and a half years, by the way, away from the presence of the serpent. And the serpent hurled water like a river out of his mouth after the woman, so that he might cause her to be swept away with the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and drank up the river which the dragon had hurled out of his mouth. So the dragon was enraged with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her children who keep the commandments of God and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Let's set our notes down right there for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed that study. I hope you had a great time hanging out here with me. If you have anything for me, please reach out to me. You need to keep looking up right now and not listen to anything anyone in the world is saying. Jesus is the only thing that matters. The greatest accomplishment that you could have in this life is getting saved and giving your life to Christ. I hope you do that before it's too late. If the rapture isn't right now or a few moments from now or even tonight, just do what we always say over here. You keep looking up and we'll see you up top.